Put a smile on your face When you're moving from place to place, place. Good morning, good morning Good morning, viewers. We're just at about 7.30 this morning, and we welcome each and every one of you back to the Tobago Updates a Morning Show, coming to you here live from Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. I'm Julian Skeet, and in this segment, we are chatting with Anselm Richards, and he's the Chief Technical Advisor, Division of Finance, Trade, and the Economy. But the topic this morning speaks to make Tobago safety a priority. Good morning to you, and welcome. Good morning, Julian. Good morning, Tobago. Thanks for having me. So we're going to start right there for the benefit of those who are not aware. Tell me how finance talking the safety, um, <laughs> Tobago safety as, as, as a priority. Tell us a little bit about that, uh, that background in the area. Okay, well, for those who may be aware or those who may not be aware that I am a crime economist. I have had a tour of duty in the police service. So I'm a trained police officer. I serve in some of the most elite units. I have written and researched extensively about crime in Trinidad and Tobago. I was a member of the 2020 committee that produced the document. I was on the security subcommittee and was the chief author of that. I have worked on a number of drug country, drug plans. I wrote the security plan for Tobago and we did the 15 year development plan in, in PRDI, hence the reason why we have an assistant commissioner in charge of Tobago. In my master's thesis, I recommended the establishment of the victim support unit. That's why we have one in the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service today. So, so certainly, so, I mean, so, so a background which I'm familiar with, but it's important <laughs> for the viewers to know. And uh, then I had up the citizen security program for over eight years in Tobago. So, we, so, so ultimately, we're looking at a situation now where uh, what we would have looked at for some time as happening in Trinidad. Uh, seems unfortunately to have reached to Tobago uh, and that's the basis on which I, I, I want us to start. Uh, was this inevitable um, that it was only a matter of time and so on if the necessary ne mechanisms aren't in place? Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, well, well, when you look at what was evolving in the country over a number of years, over two decades, you were seeing a, a, a persistent trend in the proliferation of small arms. And given the, the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago, the porous nature of our borders, the, the heavy traffic between Trinidad and Tobago, and the very lax security arrangement at our port of entry, it was inevitable that that crime situation will migrate to Tobago over time. If you go back in history when Mr. Garfield Moore was the assistant commissioner in charge of Tobago, he alerted the island. You know, notwithstanding that person would have been speaking to the issue before, that there were a proliferation of arms in Tobago because it was manifesting itself through robberies where firearm was the weapon of choice. And the issue in crime and security is that once firearms are involved in crime, that is the potential. There's a potential there for a murder. So we have an issue with illegal firearms in the country. I think that is our major crime challenge or insecurity challenge, then we have to understand the components of the of the problem. So we have a firearm issue that is manifesting itself in murders, gun violence. The, what are the realities? Trinidad and Tobago don't produce firearms and ammunition. So therefore there has to be, how do we respond to this? What, what will be the institutional response to this? Because it's the institutions of the state that utilizes the resources to provide the service and security of the nation. So how do we respond to this? It means therefore, if we are experiencing a proliferation of small firearms of of illegal firearms on our street and now we are seeing high-tech military grade weapons being used in that it means therefore that these firearms are coming in our country and it means therefore we have a problem with border security in 20 years we have not changed the configuration of the ministry of national security in response to this challenge i have written over 10 years ago that there is a need for us to look at the ministry of national security in a different in a different light given what we are experiencing as a country and therefore, I had recommended at the time that we, we establish three departments or divisions in the Ministry of National Security. The Division or Department of Border Security, that will be headed up by Coast Guard, Customs, Immigration, and, and all the other agencies that deal specifically with the security of our borders. And therefore, we have to close the borders to the, poly to the trafficking of illegal items and illicit drugs and what all that goes with it we have to put in an institutional response that gives us that kind of border security so you have a department or a division that looks exclusively not in in, in a silo yeah. context but its core function 
has to deal with the border security look at the technology that is available the research the evolution the challenges and so forth then you have a department of internal security that will be headed up by the police service prisons and all of that and then you have a department of national defense where the defense force will deal with that but there are relationship between these departments but these are specific functionalities that comes out from the ministry of national security in response to a crime situation that has not happened we are still operating the ministry of Na of, of, of 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 national security in the context that it was conceptualized a hundred years ago in Trinidad and Tobago right so what happened in the United States after 9-11 they established the Department of Homeland Security. We are not responding. We are talking, talking. We have Commissioner of Police coming and say when he was there and he was there. But what are the institutional responses that we engineering and creating to respond to our challenges? Absolutely none. Look across. Nothing has happened. So the it, question would be, where are these changes required to take place? Is that at the level of, because the, the, the Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security oftentimes speak about what we anticipate or is posted as the strategic uh, look at crime coming from the perspective of the Security Council chaired by the Prime, Prime Minister. Minister. Uh, is it that that is, you're saying that that is insufficient in terms of the approach to dealing with crime in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, if you look at the strategic responses and you're not getting any, any, any soft landing from them, the mean it is grossly insufficient i have not heard anything convincing coming from the the, the 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 national security council in terms of their response the commission of police is walking the same old deadbeat in terms of roadblocks and all of that there has to be a national response in terms of how we reconfigure our institutions of the state to respond to this challenge that is not happening for instance our problem is the porous nature of the border between trinidad and tobago you can, you can catch that boat. Tifaka from Tobago, catch the boat with it and carry it in Trinidad. Or Tif one in Trinidad with a dead body inside it. And come up on the boat with the dead body and drop it in Kena and we get murder in Tobago. Because the security arrangement in the context of what we are experiencing in Trinidad and Tobago, we are not responding to those challenges. We need to have vehicle scanners at the port. You come off this boat with a firearm, once you drive through that scanner, we see it. The police stop you at the gate. We ask you if you have a license for a license for this fire, and then the law takes its course. We are not responding. What is the security arrangement at the port? A port security step by the gate. You have anything to declare? We are in the car. We are in the ice box. Fish for me, auntie. We are in the. Bo Come on! We have seen an upsurge in fire in in gun violence in this country. Our response has to be different. The other thing we have to do: how do we get the community involved? Because that is key. We need to have a conscious conversation with the citizens of this country. We have to let every citizen understand that the presence of illegal firearm in the country poses a threat to every citizen of this country. Let us get specific to the community. Uh, and let us take Tobago. The presence of one illegal firearm in Tobago poses a threat to every single to be going and the check may be different degrees of threat so here is the thing let us see the, the shooting over the last weekend a hour a, a few hours before that shooting took place in down the, up the road mm -hmm. i came to the port saturday to buy a ticket to go to, for someone to go to trinidad and i was parking right at that that spot parked my vehicle there and went across to the port I could have parked there the minute the man come with the gun and get caught up in the crossfire. Me and business with them for last thing. But that is the kinds of threat and exposure all of us has to be going in, are exposed to when we allow illegal firearms to be on our streets and in our community. How do we get people to that level of consciousness we, we to recognize to, we, that personal responsibility as well? Because sometimes we sit and the, 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 the greatest of the conversation speaks to what the government doing, what, what the, the police, police doing, doing, what the politicians doing, what the police doing. But we, we oftentimes don't stop to hold ourselves collectively responsible exactly. as well as a community. How do we engender that or, 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 or put that effort out there for persons to recognize and, and, and that you are part of this, the, and, you and, can be part of the solution? And they, unless we bring the population to that point where we recognize that we have to have a collective, all Trinidad and Tobago population respond to this gun violence, the security services will do as much as they can but it requires a 
a, a productive relationship between the community, between the citizenry and the law enforcement agencies. And therefore, we have to have the conversation. We have to, we have to present the threat to the citizenry in as real as we can. We have to let Tobigonians know that a man with a firearm in Lesquito, in Bell Garden, in Kendall, in Roxborough, poses a threat to every single family and every household in that community because your son your daughter your nephew your brother your uncle your auntie your dog could be walking down the road and innocently get caught up in the crossfire and we call it collateral damage we cannot sit down in a community as citizens we cannot sit down in in our villages as to be union, knowing and seeing young men and young women with firearms and keeping silent and when the firearm is used to commit murder we jump out and talk what the police doing what are we doing and we sit there quietly and not notifying the the law enforcement community that there is an illegal firearm by john let the police know and let them follow john and get the firearm but would one of the strategies for letting the police know have to do with the relations that the police ought to have with the communities as well i know we've had a couple of officers come here in terms of regular updates and speaking to that but ultimately are we at that point where the relationship exists between the police and the communities in such a in, in, in such a manner we know that there is a relationship challenge between the police and the community but as citizens we are rational we are intelligent and we have to make the calculation would you prefer to continue to live with the risk of being shot or your son or your daughter being innocently be shot by the person in your community who you know has a firearm because you don't want to talk to the police who is mandated by law to recover these illegal firearm so you want to live in Bacalet where you're living knowing your neighbor have a gun and you don't want to talk to Collie Cecil because you ain't like police and your neighbor there with the gun shooting up the tongue and you remaining quiet and then BAM the bullet hit your daughter and you start to cry I should I tell Collis last week and we have to have this real conversation you know because the police alone cannot do it every citizen of this country has a responsibility to ensure that their community their villages their household are safe and that is the kind of response because there is a social response there's a social mechanism we call social con crime control which happens outside of the law enforcement where the citizenry through our own social coding our own social parameters establish control mechanism to prevent crime in our community and that is the foundation of safety safety the, se the security forces will provide security but safety comes when the citizens in partnership with the police establish that functional relationship this is the, the, the police service can't guarantee your safety though you have to work with them to guarantee that and let me explain something you have a security detail they're providing security but your safety who they, are, who they are providing the security for depends on how you relate the relationship between you and them because if Sorry. you want to run away from your security detail and go reach a man so and then they'll get bullet you're putting yourself at risk so that is the kind of conversation we need to have there are some things we need to do at the institutional level we need to look at the capability of the law enforcement institution we need to look at this thing from a criminal justice perspective what is happening with the prison what is happening in the courts we have Ava Archie, Ava Archie have been the the, the the chief justice for for over 10 years what is happening with, with, with justice in this country you can't have persons in prison on criminal charges for 15 20 14 years 10 years five years what is really happening in that part of the criminal justice system so we come here every day and we talk about the police but there's a bigger matrix that speaks to security what is happening in the prison we have guns weed phone all kind of thing eliciting being tra traffic in the prison how are we rehabilitating our prisoners how are we reintegrating them into society this is a big problem you know so crime is a big problem it's not a one variable issue it's a very complex and dynamic um problem that we have at our hands and if we don't understand the moving parts we are going to be very partial and selective with how we respond to it so what, what we're speaking to seems to be a lot of what might be considered more of the long-term options um what do we do at least while we work on those uh, in the interim to really try to curb and to bring some sense of control uh, back to the Tobago that we prefer to enjoy uh, which was a lot more peaceful than it is now right so there's no one magic one or one magic bullet to this situation as I said it is a human issue it's a very complex 
problem, very, very complex with many moving parts. But there are some immediate things we can do as a society. One, we have to find the resources and lock down the borders, right? So we, and that means that you preventing more of the illegal fire to get into the space that is created, that is boiling, that is erupting with gun violence. So you lock down the borders as best as you can. There are, the, there are technologies that is available. We, mean, we have to upgrade the Coast Guard. We have to get more vessels in the sea. We have to look at our, because some of the fires are coming through the um, legal ports of entry. Some of the new discovery is not all gone again. You see, you know, it's AR-40 yes. and Mac. Very and modern. <laughs> very modern and clean and new weapons. Right? So, we have not responded efficiently with what is with the meltdown in Venezuela, but that's another conversation on how we che with our, cheated with and our neighbor impact. and the direct impact they had with, with, with violence in this country. So, we locked down the borders. So, we contain in this situation internally, and that's why the, the, the reconfiguration of our national security apparatus becomes very important. So, the, border, the, 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 the Department of Border Security would have locked down the borders right to ensure that we don't have the porous nature for illicit, illicit substances and illegal firearms to come in so we lock it down we contain you have to contain the situation and then when you contain the situation you come and you clean up inside so the, the internal security apparatus now the police their mission is to track down recover and destroy this firearm tree so you have to have that. You may have other social programs where you invite people to hand up the illegal guns, a gun amnesty, if, yes. if, if we want, if we have the appetite for that, and so forth. But the, the the internal security apparatus has to focus on recovering this illegal firearm, and they has to be relentless, and they have to set themselves targets. So we are going. We have an estimate of how much illegal firearm we have in the country. We want to recover that within a year. So it means, therefore, we have to pick up it. 8 point something percent of those every month and that has to be a sustained program for a period of time so we certainly and i love the fact that we are talking solutions looking at both short term and long term but we've got to take a quick break viewers and i see even the viewers getting involved and this is what we like most certainly Rosalind more or more allen is indicating more patrols are needed carl and kennedy having his input as well with regards to the approach that needs to happen here uh, in this space and this is a very good indication and and, and stems and is connected <laughs> directly to the conversation we're having at the moment with anselm richards in terms of having that wider approach and reach as we talk crime fighting and treating with this issue here in Stabigo. Stay tuned. We're coming back with Anselm Richards. But at this point, we head on out to a break and we want to remind you that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live. Welcome back to the Morning Show on Tobago Updates Television. I am Adana Kambi, and we continue conversations with Mr. Anselm Richards. He is the Chief Technical Advisor in the Division of Finance, Trade, and the Economy. And we're talking about Make Tobago Safety a Priority. And he was having conversations earlier with Julian Skeet as they continue talking about what are we going to do? What are the solutions? What are the steps we need to take to get Tobago into that safe space? All right. So... We have to go back in terms from the law enforcement perspective. We have to go back to some of the microstructure of law enforcement, microstructure of policing. So, beat and patrol is a critical one. We have to have the police outside on the street, setting up their relationships with the community because you know, if you keep meeting a person over time, a relationship will build out. So, we need to have the police out, both in mobile and foot patrols. We have to look at the whole reconfiguration of the operation of the police service in the context of Tobago, what we need to do differently. Do we need to establish uh, a unit or an operation that seeks to recover firearm daily? That may be one of the responses that we need to do because we have an issue with firearm. What is happening with our intelligence, the quality of our intelligence? Because if our intelligence is working, we need to be tracking these firearm persons, these persons who are suspected of having firearm and who intelligent point having firearm on a daily basis to recover these firearm. So we have to look at all those internal mechanisms. We have to look at the operation of the prison systems. We have to look at what is happening at the port of entry and our borders as a whole. So what is happening at the port? Do we have the, the technology to efficiently check our security requirements at the port in terms of vehicle coming to Tobago or leaving Tobago? What is coming in these goods vehicle? Is only flour and sugar alone or you have gun in them? You know, we need to look at these things in a very structured and organized way. There are things that we can do to improve that. We have to look at what is happening at the community. What is the social response of Tobago to the crime situation? Do we need to re-establish the, the, the Tobago Community Safety Program? I think that is a resounding yes, because we need to have a mechanism where we are having these social conversations and social organizations and social events that speaks to improving um, the, the social safety net 
at the community level and that will form the basis for an interrelated partnership with the police because we are organizing organized groups and the community in terms of their resources and the ability to respond to their own um, safety challenges so we need to look at that at different layers we need to look at what is happening in terms of the socialization because that is key how we will socialize our that's children right. our that's socialize right. our children are not being socialized that way again that's right even that's in right. the home the socialization pattern has changed isolation isolation isolation, isolation, isolation because they are now living in the digital space that's right and how do we how do we respond to that as families how do we respond to that as communities those are things that we, we i don't have all the answers but i'm saying that we still have to have those personal meetings or, if or events that bring people together bring your children together that the children will play with the neighbor children and so forth and learn different rules and how to deal with conflicts and so forth so we have to look at this thing in a holistic manner and put our responses in response to the change in reality because the society you know we talk about long time it wasn't so but tobago the, the way tobago function now is not the way it functions now as a child That's right. you know i made the point some years ago i went back to signal hill where i did a levels and the classroom was configured the same way when i was there 30 years ago <laughs> and i'm saying but well, this is madness you can't be schooling my child in the same physical context that you schooled me 30 years ago when all the, the society have changed rapidly so we have to look at what is happening in the holistic space and we have to do the kinds of institutional responses that will bring the kind of success we are looking for we need to have serious monitoring and evaluation of what we are doing if the police sets targets then the police must report with the population accountability. and accountability and that's the way what is what what is what is measured is what is done so if we're not measuring anything and we're not accounting for anything then we don't know what is happening in this space so all those are things that we can do definitely we have to we have to change the conversation we have to have a broader conversation on crime the conversation on crime have been very very myopic it has been what the police is doing but crime the response to crime requires a broader criminal justice societal response and if we continue to focus the conversation on the police service we are going to miss the other components and, and other variables that are impacting the crime situation in this country so my 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 suggestion is that we we look at the configuration of the ministry of national security in response to the the definition of the problem we are fight we are fighting now the problem we are fighting is gun violence and therefore what are the component parts of that what are the different the, the, the defining features of that gun violence we have a proliferation of small arms in the country the reality is that we are not producing these fire how are they coming into the country we have to close down the border how are we tracking these firearms because one of the things when i was operative in the police service and one of the things we, we, we were planning to do is to ensure when you seize a firearm you should track that firearm from the back to the source you know, from the manufacturers you manufacture this fire where was this soul who bought this firearm how would you know how the firearm is coming into the country that is the kind of intelligence and investigation you need to do right and i guess the police service is doing that well how efficiently are they doing that because unless you do that you would not know where the porous where these firearms are coming in and how would you close up those gaps in the border security arrangement mr richards i see why you are a technical advisor because <laughs> you have to get to the technicalities you see the thing is we respond to the end results usually yes. And we have to get to the root of it, which is what you're talking about. How do we get to this place? And this is what we have to do if we want to get to the root of the situation. And of course, to curb the surge in crime in Trinidad and Tobago, specifically in the Tobago space. Because the Tobago space is smaller. Small. And so it is more manageable. And exactly. I believe we have the assets to get it done. We have the intelligence. We just need to apply. And we need not to be reactive, but we need to go from the root, from the beginning, from the cause. We need to go back to when it was working, what caused it to work, exactly. and implement those things. This is what you are saying yeah. to ensure a safer um, Trinidad and Tobago and a space in Tobago here for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking with Mr. Anselm Richard, Richards, the Chief Technical Advisor in the Division of uh, Finance, Trade and the Economy, bringing some insight on the priority of Tobago's safety, uh, making a safe space for all of us, for me, for you, your children, your grandchildren, our communities, our properties, all that concern us is supposed to be our priority. And that's the conversation we've been having, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for choosing us and for staying with us throughout our entire programming. And as we end the morning show, we do not end our programming. We move on over to Tobago Notes and then GMT with Candice Jackson. So we ask you to continue to stay with us. And as we go to a break, we ask you to share the live, share the live, share the live.